Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance, and today we need to discuss the current bear argument in the stock market. For the last year or so, bears have kind of been making me laugh because they come up with one argument and it ends up being incorrect, so they change their argument to something else, which then ends up being incorrect, so they change it again and again and again and again. Like, flashback to last October, and the mainstream bearish argument in the stock market was that the economy was going to slow down so much that we would see a recession and or a depression resulting in the stock market crashing. Fast forward to today and the argument has flipped on its head. It's done a 180. The new bear argument is that the economy is running too hot. The economy is running too hot. And as a result, the Fed's going to have to raise rates more, which will crash the stock market. That is the direct opposite argument than bears were making less than a year ago last October. But needless to say, this recent correction in the stock market, down 4.7% in the S&P 500 since July 31st, is kind of reigniting these bear arguments. People are now saying, oh, we finally hit the top. Or they're saying this is the start of the crash they've been waiting for. Now, in my opinion, I think this is all bogus. And in today's video, I'll be discussing why that is. In fact, in my most recent video that I posted last night, I posted a video about PayPal stock, which, by the way, thank you so much. This video is doing tremendously. We had a commenter basically put together this entire current bear argument for me. Thank you very much. And I will be dissecting each individual point here in today's video. But first, I know you're excited for this video, but I need you to do me one favor. If you are new here or returning and not yet subscribed, I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button down below. We're one of the fastest growing stock market YouTube channels currently, and I'm biased, but it'd be pretty cool to maintain that trend. Also, on this channel, all opinions are welcome. I think that's how everybody becomes a better investor. So whether or not you agree with me, in this video, drop me a comment down below your opinion on the current stock market. Is this new bull market here to stay or is this recent correction the start of a bigger crash to come? Now to start with, all we need to do is look at the 10-year treasury yield currently to see why the stock market has had a rough month of August. At the beginning of August, we got some better than expected economic data which resulted in the 10-year treasury yield popping above 4%. And ever since then, we actually broke last year's high of 4.25% today as I'm recording this video. And there's fears now that this 10-year treasury yield will go to 4.5% or even 5%. Obviously, if that happens, we're going to see some valuation crunch in the stock market. We're going to see those large tech companies take a hit, especially they're the most vulnerable because their PE multiples are the highest currently. This recent surge above last year's highs is a direct result of the release of July's FOMC minutes, which strongly suggested that the Fed may have to raise the federal funds rate further as a result of this solid economic growth that we've been seeing. So it sounds counterintuitive. But yes, this sell-off in the stock market is a direct result of the economy being too hot and people fearing that as a result of that, the Fed will have to raise rates higher. The Atlanta Fed has a pretty neat tool called GDP Now, which actually is really, really accurate when it comes to predicting GDP growth in future quarters. Right now, we're in Q3, and... The GDP now is suggesting that in Q3 of this year, our GDP is going to grow 5.8%, almost 6% growth in a quarter for our GDP. Clearly, for an economy our size, this is terrific growth. But again, this is sparking fears that the Fed may have to raise rates further as a result of the economy running hot. But this comment I got on yesterday's video puts together this entire bear thesis currently for me. And he starts out with saying there's $100 billion in annual gas spend from U.S. consumers, that there's $100 billion in student loans due in October, that the U.S. credit system got downgraded, that interest rates are going up because of inflation, that China is going through deflation because there's no demand. And then he says you can only get so much money from the consumer before they're broke. And then he says there's a reason Michael Burry is shorting the stock market. And he says, sell PayPal and buy SQQQ. So this individual is shorting the NASDAQ. And then he says he's a strategic analyst and advisor at the Vanguard Group of North America. Well, hello, I'm Rex Finance, a 22-year-old stock market YouTuber and investor. But these first two items he lists out, the $100 billion in gas spend and the $100 billion in student loans coming due in October, as well as his line here that says you can only get so much money from the consumer before they're broke, 
is a very common bearish argument right now on Twitter. It's going all it's going all over X. It's X now. I apologize. Unusual Whales tweeted today, excess savings U.S. households built up during the pandemic will probably be exhausted in the current quarter, according to research from the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. This is a very common argument for bears, that consumers are running out of money, and when they do, that's when the stock market's going to crash. Now, yes, there's some truth to this. The excess savings that U.S. households accumulated because of stimulus checks is eventually going to run out, but we cannot stop our research here because... There's some important things at play, such as the level of household net worth by generation, which arguably has never been higher. Baby boomers, the people that are retiring currently, they've accumulated 75 trillion, with a T, trillion dollars of net worth. This is money that baby boomers have currently. These people are retiring. What do you do when you retire? You go out and spend your money, especially this generation that was locked up because of the pandemic in 2020. The silent generation has $18 trillion in net worth. Gen X has $39.9 trillion in net worth. And millennials have $8 trillion of net worth. This is money in the economy that these people can end up spending. If we scroll through these different charts, you'll see that most of these assets are liquid. They're held in corporate equities and mutual funds. They're held in pension entitlements. And they're held in deposits and money market funds. So personally, I think this is a big reason why our economy has sidestepped this recession that so many people have been predicting. Never in history have generations had more net worth and liquid net worth at that effect that they can go out and spend in the economy. Who cares about COVID excess savings when the, the net worth of baby boomers who are all spending their money currently is $75 trillion. So yeah, I'll acknowledge that we're spending a lot of money right now, but we have a lot of money. We have more money than we've ever had before. And then another piece of the bearish argument right now is that China is going through deflation because they have no demand. Now, this is true. But again, we can't stop our research here. As a result of China's economy going through deflation, U.S. import prices from China year over year are down 2.3%. So China is literally exporting deflation into our economy, which is helping our fight against inflation. And this is another thing that's keeping our economy very, very strong. We get cheaper goods from China. And what do U.S. consumers like to do? We like to spend our money. And then he says interest rates are going up because of inflation? Yes, that was true in the past, but when we're looking forward, interest rates are not going up because of inflation. We can look at the current CPI data and see that X shelter headline inflation year over year is at 2%. What's the Fed's goal for inflation? It's 2%. Core CPI, core CPI X shelter, excluding shelter, 2.5%. Very, very close to the Fed's overall target. The reason we're taking shelter out of this is because shelter has major lag effects before the current prices actually hit the CPI data. We all know that shelter has come down significantly and eventually it's going to show in this CPI data. So inflation is no longer a battle. This battle has been won. All items in the economy included other than shelter Inflation is only up 2% year over year via the headline number. Interest rates are going up because of this strong economy we've been seeing, not because of inflation. And again, we can look back at the 10-year treasury yield to see this. The markets don't like a strong economy right now because they're fearful that the Fed is going to miss the entire point, that the inflation battle's been won. They're going to miss the point and continue to raise rates because they think the economy is going to keep inflation above the 2% target for some time to come. And again, we can look at the GDP now estimate at 5.8% for Q3 of this year. The economy is running very, very hot. This is why interest rates may go up if inflation doesn't continue to come down. But we know based on our research that it will continue to come down because shelter has come down. We're just waiting for that information to hit the CPI data. Now, as for this individual saying there's a reason Michael Burry is shorting the stock market, I think this is a horrible point. You know, a broken clock is correct twice a day. Michael Burry has been right once in the last 
15 years. So I think looking at what Michael Burry is doing is a big mistake because he has been incorrect far more often than he has been correct. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did acknowledge that the rise in treasury yields could be problematic for stocks, specifically the mega cap eight, whose valuation multiples are extremely high right now. As the 10 year treasury yield rises, we will see valuation crunch in the stock market. We have already seen that so far in August. I personally believe that treasury yields are very, very close to their peak, and here's why. Next week, we have the dreaded Jackson Hole Conference. If you guys have been invested in the stock market long enough, you'd know that last year, the Jackson Hole meeting was a very, very bad catalyst for the stock market because Jerome Powell, this article explains it. He mentioned, while higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. He reminded us that the road back to the Fed's target of 2% inflation was a long one, this was a very, very hawkish speech by Jerome Powell. However, I believe that next week at this year's Jackson Hole meeting, we're going to get the exact opposite from Jerome Powell. I believe that this time he's going to be ultra dovish. I think he's going to acknowledge that we're much, much closer to the end of this inflation fight than the beginning. And honestly, I don't know if he has a choice. If he comes out and speaks hawkishly, it'll send mortgage rates up. And we know that the Fed is watching the commercial real estate market very, very closely right now because if we're going to see a credit crunch happen, it's probably going to be as a result of the commercial real estate right now. If mortgage rates go up, defaults on commercial real estate are going to increase rapidly. And that would be a big problem for the Fed. Don't think the Fed's ignoring that. So as a result of that, I don't think Jerome Powell has a choice. He needs to calm down this bond market. Also coming out more dovishly would benefit the federal deficit, as well as the ballooning interest expense that the government's spending every single year paying down their debt. It would relieve some of that pressure. So there's a lot of things here pointing to Jerome Powell coming out and being a dove more than a hawk. And if that's the case, I mentioned, I made a video at the beginning of August saying that I thought a dip in the stock market was going to come. And sure enough, we've gotten it. Now, as I sit here today, if Jerome Powell comes out and talks like I think he will at, at the Jackson Hole meeting, I think that this stock market correction will come to an end next week. That this stock market correction will bottom next week and we will hit new all-time highs in the stock market indices before the end of the year. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a strategic analyst, an advisor at the Vanguard Group like that guy was today, and I don't have a crystal ball. So these are just my own thoughts and opinions. I just show you my thoughts and opinions so you can come up with your own thoughts and opinions. Don't blindly follow what I say or what I do. I encourage you to do your own research, and if you disagree with me, that's okay. Leave me a comment down below whether you think this bull market is going to return or if this is the start of the next crash. Again, remember to subscribe down below if you're new here or returning and not yet subscribed. With that, stay blessed. Keep 10 toes to the ground and your chin up. Peace out.